So, uh, want to get your formal position on cannabis, cannabis re What's going on? And, you know, how do you feel about how the city is handling it? And uh, specifically, whether or not taking advantage of the social equity opportunities enough, or if the plan that you're aware of in the city would address that issue and use it enough for an emerging industry. And then if you want to address your, your broader platform and okay. stuff. Uh, what you're typically running on. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you for those questions. They're all very good questions. And um, my name is Tawana Simpson. I'm a candidate for state rep for District 4. And yes, I definitely support the cannabis industry. Um, the importance of it on more than one side, you know, um, the medical side as well as the recreational side, but also the other um, things that can be made from hemp and cannabis of uh, the industry in its totality. And I'm not, I'm, I know that um, Isaac was working on um, legislation to amend, or I don't know, we were, we were discussing and um, with other um, activists from other states more about whether, whether we were, whether I need social equity um, language or a what we had going on because of the, what's going on in Detroit and the city opting out. And that the bill really wasn't, to me, written fairly. Um, so those are my views about, you know, what's going on with the city and the social equity piece. I know if I'm elected, I definitely want to work further on that. Um, and also making sure um, Bill 5120, you know, makes it to the um, floor and get voted on for the um, expungement um, that uh, Representative Isaac Robinson um, put together to burn all, expunge all the marijuana convictions across the state. Right. So all those are things that I'm really concerned about. And I know that it would make a very, very big difference in how, how um, Detroiters live with that expungement bill um, becoming law. Between 40 to 50% of the um, city residents could um, actually have a second chance at applying for higher paying jobs in the city and actually throughout the state. Right on. So that so the audio continues to be a little shaky, just so you know. So I'm kind of catching most of it, but uh, it's not sounding real clear all the time. Okay, I apologize. That's the way I'm talking straight into my mic. Um, can you hear me clear now? I can yeah. Try. Yeah. Um, okay, so I said that I, I, I definitely approve of the marijuana industry. I want to go further on some of the bills and um, that Isaac, um, Isaac started, um, that, I'm sorry, that Isaac had going on. So, um, I'm sorry, I love we kind, of, we kind of caught that, and that's cool because he was really good for our, for our issue, yeah. kind of taking over that spot. And you're you're planning on also supporting and and picking up some things where he was leaving off, and I, I believe that's what you're saying too. Yeah, yeah. And I apologize. I didn't want to cut the fan on because okay. too much noise, but it it got really hot here. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, I've got mine running. If it's too hot not to, for real. <laughs> Can we handle Don't kill outside? yourself for us, for real. <laughs> right, yep, yep. Take it easy and be safe. Uh, but <laughs> hearing that, um, you know, I'm sure you're going to do things in your own way, but to, but to continue that spirit of, of being in support of this issue is, is hard. Oh, most definitely. Most, most definitely. Um, because I, I believe that it's the industry that can help help our city. Help help the working class, and it's and this an industry where we lost a lot of jobs. Places in the auto industry, we can you know here's another industry wide open that people can go into. They can become growers, they can become processors. I mean, it's yeah. just an array of things that people can do, and it's and and you know, it means a lot to me to show people that it's just not about about getting high. You know, it's it's about helping people, calming people down. 
making denim jeans. Now I heard they're making jeans out of hemp and cement and all types of things. Right. And of course, if somebody yep. wanted to get high, they shouldn't have to like get arrested or go to jail over it. Exactly. They should not. As a matter of fact, um, I'm encouraging my constituents, the constituents of District 4, to call in right now to put an amendment to um, 51, the bill 5120 not to um, um, drug, not to test for marijuana in order, you know, in order to get a job. Yeah. So if it's legal, right. you know, yeah. should they use that against? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that is awesome. Yeah, so a lot I, of the business. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, a lot of businesses in in Detroit are owned by folks that don't necessarily live in the city, and that really creates an income disparity amongst the residents. What proposals would you like to see the city implement to ensure that that uh, the cannabis industry is embraced by Detroiters first? Well, first they need to opt in. They need to opt in and now the Detroit right. is that they can um, participate, you know, have an opportunity to as we speak and then work the kinks out as we go along. It, it makes no earthly sense there to me go. it's not opting in. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it defies logic. It really does. Right. Well, There's so many opportunities out there for, for people. It just defies logic. What, you're, you're encouraging people to set up on the perimeter of the city and get their, their businesses established. And then they're not going to want to move across. I mean, why would they move at that point? Look at all the people. And, and the economic, the, the, the social equity, the economic, um, they're losing out on all the stuff that the people in the city who qualify for the people, they're losing out on this. Is that, how long is that good for, Jamie? That equity program? You know, that's, that is a good question. I think it's, I would, I would it's Assume perpetual. It's on, yeah, it's ongoing. Is it perpetual? Well, you need, you need but the it's a But yeah. these, this is the very people, this is the very type of, of, um, of situation where, where that this program applies to. This is the very people this program was written for. And, and, and they're being denied industry. that. They can't use it. They can't right. use it. And, and people could absolutely open businesses that made it affordable for people to do that in the city. It, it just makes no sense to me. These, these types of emerging industries don't come along very often. And here's one. Never. Never. We can, we Not can take on advantage scale. of it. We yeah. can take it here. We, we take advantage of it to, to write a lot of those yeah. problems. We're very aware yeah. of now. And it's just not in that direction. It's certainly that place where it's obvious where it should be happening. Yeah. Certainly, we see communities all across Michigan that use great incentive in order to get business to come in. They give uh, tax abatements, they do road sure reconstruction, do. they put up stop signs and stop lights and recreate all kinds of different stuff in order to, to seduce business to come in. All we really need is just you to say, yep, and, and we'll do the rest. Shelly, did you want to try and slide in here? It looks like you've been trying to talk, girl. What's that? Did you want to Shelly. contribute? It looks like you Shelly. were trying to say something. Shelly Smith needs a read. I think, I think her uh, phone might just be okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I just I had a support and then my little phone holder fell down, and so yeah, okay. technical difficulties. Get it? Get right. handle on the conversation because the first time I was on, I couldn't really. Yeah. Very well, so, it, so. Tawana, how long have you been in the fourth district? Is that someplace you've you've grown up? You've been around for a while. Are you talking to me? No, Tawana no. Simpson, who's running for for house oh, rep in the fourth okay, district. Okay. Gotcha. 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 Okay. I have lived in different parts of District 4 my entire life. Nice. Cool. Nice. Yeah. And, and who better to represent that community than somebody who's of the community and has seen everything that goes on there? Same thing That's with right. Dale Williams. He's running against somebody who was just recently moved into the area. Right. Well, yeah. Isn't from the community. I think when you're when you've grown up someplace, you have a perspective. We did this in, in 20 years ago. We did this 10 years ago. We did this five years ago. When you just walk into the neighborhood, you have no sense of history. You recreate past failures because you don't know any better. And you you dismiss valued voices because you don't recognize their value. So I'm glad to hear that you're from your district that you're proposing to represent. That's great. Hey, um, I have a question for Tawana. Um, it, is the Russell Industrial Center in District 4? Yes, Hang on, Kelly, can you... Uh, I didn't hear your, that. Uh, I believe she said else? yes, it is. Everybody, everybody's not yes. talking mute. 
no mute when you talk. There's a lot of background noise right now that needs to be muted. Somebody individually? Yeah, I think that's Shelly. But um, we'll see if we can mute her from this end. All right. Hold on. Yeah, but the question to tomorrow was it, the Russell Industrial Center is in District Four. Yes, it is. Yes, okay. It is. And then I also wanted to ask you, what did you think of the impact that the High Times and the, the Bazaar had on District 4? Was it positive, negative? How would you grade it? I caught a little bit that said it was very positive. Yeah, I don't know. I, if Shelly can hear us, if she could mute her mic, that would be cool. Shelly, please mute your mic. There we go. All right, here we go. Sorry about that. She couldn't hear us probably because the connection wasn't good enough to hear right. us. It was good enough to pick up on her sound, but uh, please go ahead. So the Russell is inside District 4 then, is what we gathered. I see and, that, and you thought that the High Times Cannabis Cup was outstanding. Outstanding. <laughs> okay, embellished a little bit. All right, and then I guess, you know, just really know what I mostly know about District 4 is the Russ. Um, I guess I wanted to know what can what can be done to to bring the community up by people that just seem to only come to the Russell. Oh, you know, you know, I have to keep referring back to our honorable Isaac Robinson. We I was on we we had a team, you know, I'm a former school board member and I represented the same district as District Three was my school board district. So that's how we became very close friends and um and working together. So Isaac was giving a jazz concert once a month. And so we were bringing all, people from all over the district to one place once a month. And we, you know, we, we informed them what was going on in the district. And then we played a little music, a little jazz, and people got to know each other and things like that. So, you know, we were building bridges, um, you know, in the district. But there's a lot of nice things going on in District 4. A lot of people don't know the city airport is a part of District 4. And, and, you know, under the CARES Act, there was a lot of um, airports. So we have we have quite a few jewels in the District 4. Midtown is part of District 4. Of course, the city of Hamtramck. You have a couple historic um, communities. Actually, you have three, maybe four, if you, if you include the LaSalle's. You have the um, Boston Edison, Atkinson, and then the um, over at Broad Street. You get the name of that one. Uh, you think? Yeah, I didn't know to go so far east and incorporate the, yeah. uh, the airport because it is pretty good. So, you know, District 4 is very, 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 very diverse. Yeah, I guess, I guess it is. And I was just mostly referring to that, you know, that little area right there between uh, 75 and like the lodge, let's say. Oh. North End 75, um, yeah, I'm trying to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, and I feel that, you know, it's, you know, what we like about the Russ is that it's secluded and it is kind of industrial, so there's not a lot of residential stuff going on, which is good. But <laughs> at the same time, you know, it is part of a neighborhood. And, you know, I feel like, you know, you should always pay respect to where you're at. Well, so, you, know, you got to start your block club with some form of organization. You have to start from an organization, mm -hmm. and then that's how that's how we, you know, we all come together. It can be, you know, based um, an art program, you know, into a couple of um, galleries over in there. I mean, art shows over there. 
Tuana, is anybody doing that jazz thing now that Isaac is unfortunately gone? Because that sounds like a program that should be duplicated everywhere. That's a great bringer right. together of people. Right, right. As of now, no. But once I'm elected, I'm going to do it. And whether, whether I'm elected or not, I'm going to try to make it happen because it was a very, very nice, nice event. And I met so many people there and, you know, and it was just, it was just a beautiful thing. And what was most enlightening about it was that you watch the community grow and learn and people had, they, they felt comfortable to ask questions. It wasn't, they wasn't, you know, worried about, you know, a black club or who's going to get elected or not elected. You know, it was just, it was a different way of bringing people together. And it's all, all about 30 minutes of business and the rest of the e Sunday evening would be, you know, entertainment. It was really nice. Well, music is the great unifier, and Detroit is one of the greatest music cities on the planet. So it seems like a natural match. I would love to see that duplicated all over the place. Yeah, it would. It would. I mean, it, it should. It should be. I think it will. Because people understood that, um, that that's how Isaac brought a lot of people together. You know, Isaac was a ballroom dancer. <laughs> that was a big man to be a ballroom dancer, boy. Uh, he was light on his feet. He was the man on the dance floor. <laughs> oh, awesome. Are you, uh, are you familiar with any, uh, any data from your campaign, how you're looking? Um, what no. the prospects are in August for your uh, chances of success? In the it's, it's really, it's really hard to, um, to see in a local race like this. I got in, I got in a race very late. So, you know, um, I didn't. I just started from a grassroots point, and most people um, know me because of my work with the schools when I was on um, K through 12, when I was on the Detroit Board of Education, and then the work that I did with Isaac. So I knew that I could get across the district pretty well. But to say exactly from data point of view, I really don't know yet. Polling is usually going? something people pay for, so I'm sure there's not a lot of people paying at this stage for polling on local elections. Yeah. Yeah. How many people are in the race? How many, how many are for the primary in August? It's 13. 13 people. Wow. Very big field. That's kind of good. I mean, a lot of people want to be involved. They want to, yeah. want to get elected and make decisions and help things. It's been a long time where there's been a lot of apathy, it seems like. The parks became it, obvious, so people are spurned to kind of want to contribute. And Tawana, you've been in your district your entire life. Have you ever seen 13 people vying for this office before? No, not this many. I think um, when uh, Rosemary, Rosemary races, it was six. But no, I haven't seen 13. That's a lot of enthusiasm for politics, you know, uh, in a time when people really are getting sick of politics. That's a beautiful thing to see. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't. <laughs> I wish the field was a little bit more narrow, I, probably. <laughs> that, you know, a lot of people seen an opportunity. And, you where, know, can people, uh, where can people uh, find out more about your okay, uh, you donation? Facebook, Twitter, Tawana for Michigan org is my website. And Tawana Simpson on Facebook. Twitter and save our schools Instagram. Okay. Lana for Michigan.org. And is that the number four or spelled out for? It's Simpson, the number four, Michigan.org. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. It's dot com. I got two. It's not. It's not okay. Com. Uh, Simpson yeah. for, for Michigan, the number four, dot com. And when's the primary, when is the primary election for you? August 4th. But, you know, um, we're, we're trying to encourage everyone to vote absentee so that we can uh, practice hope for listening and everybody be safe. I've heard that there's a, like a million more requests for absentee ballots at this time than there were at the relative time for the 2016 election. Well, no one had to request them. This this, this legislator passed it. And sent everyone in the state a, um, an application yeah. for the absence. Right. Which is really the way it should be. Just like expungement, you shouldn't have to go through hoops to get your record expunged. The state should automatically or make it as easy as possible 
to accomplish expungement. And I think perhaps some of the bills that are currently before the legislature make it more difficult for cannabis felons to expunge their records than it does for other types of crimes. Right, not taking advantage of these easier ways to vote is you know, part of the suppression that we see. It's pretty obvious in an attempt to try yeah. to keep power and keep people from having input, having a voice. So hopefully this does really help with that. There's a lot of change. You know, before we kind of wrap up, you know, one of the questions that we've asked people in the last couple of weeks on this show is the, uh, the uprising in response to the disproportionate treatment for our black and brown citizens has, you know, obviously really set off by the most recent uh, issue with uh, Floyd in Minneapolis. And uh, do you see this uprising, the series of protests, uh, making a difference and actually finally turning the corner in some areas? Well, it's definitely causing conversation. Change will have to come from each individual person, you know. That's, you know, this really breaks down to your moral compass. So, but I think talking about it, you know, bringing, bringing things to light, but the protesting, um, I, I think it's good. It's good for, you know, activists if that's where they are in their activism, but it's going to take protesting. It's going to take, you know, active listening, you know, it's going to take compromise. It's going to take people wanting to work together. To really get over this or get through this right so any anything else you want to leave us with before we uh move on and end the segment yes i guess i want to say to everyone that i am not a politician i am i'm, I'm a humanitarian but i decided to run because when um with working with isaac and his mom and spending as my life in this district, I put a lot of energy and effort into, you know, bringing us together and sharing and caring. And so that's, that was my reason for running, stepping up, being a leader in that capacity. But I so heartily believe that the cannabis okay. change the lives of many people in the city. Of right. We really appreciate it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I was finished. And I think we lost each other. Hello? Hi, Tawana, it, it's really a, a bad connection. Yeah, no, no. Thank you. Thank you very much for being on Just Cabbage Cafe today. We appreciate it. <laughs>